everybody. So my name is Lynn Reynolds, and I'm the president of the Association for Women in Computing Puget Sound. I've been involved with the organization for about 20 years in some capacity or another, either as a supporter or programs chair or currently their president. Who we are. So the Association for Women in Computing is actually a professional networking organization that was started in 1978, the national organization. Shh. And our Puget Sound chapter was started in 79, a year later. And this is back in the day, of course, when A, IT wasn't really a thing. You didn't have very many women in IT and you certainly didn't have any women in IT organizations. And so this was kind of the, some of the first organizations to start and provide a mechanism for women to come together, talk about careers, have a safe space to collaborate, and we continue that mission today. So some of these, I'm apologizing, some of the, these stats I know are a little bit dated, but I think it's also very telling since we have people like Northwestern and a lot of the groups in the room that can speak to Ignite uh, how this is changing. Um, as jobs and demand for IT skills keeps increasing, we've, you know, we're finding it difficult, A, to keep up with the demand for skilled workers, and then also to still have um, a certain amount of diversity and representation within the gender, genders as well as uh, across ethnicities and uh, other kinds of cultural diversities. And so as uh, the demand and the participation in, in tech continues, it's still um, a pretty big disparity between men and women, although we're getting very, you know, we're getting closer. This is uh, other figures about uh, kind of across the, the world, um, some of the past imbalances that we're seeing across STEM fields. Um, and it, it really kind of depends on how you slice the STEM onion. If you're um, pulling in biological sciences into those STEM counts, that's gonna be a different matter than if you're solely focusing on mathematics and computer sciences and tech. So, but we're making strides in uh, balancing and, and catching up those numbers, but we have had the big disparity in the past. Um, figures from 2016, we were still only graduating about 7% of women from STEM programs, and it was still about a 60-30 uh, balance between 30% women and 60% men that were graduating from STEM programs in as late or as recently as 2016, but we're catching those figures up. And even if women do go into tech or go into STEM fields, um, we're also see seeing difficulty retaining these women in the fields. Primarily, there's a lot of reasons why women leave. Um, sometimes it's balancing, you know, the long hours of working in tech. If you're trying to start a family, it could be that you don't have uh, a network or a community to talk to in your own workplace, that you don't really have a sponsor or a mentor that's kind of taking you seriously and helping you with your career. All of those things are contributing factors, and so we're seeing women that statistically are 80% happy, or 80% of the women are happy with their jobs, are still leaving tech for a variety of reasons. So not only would we have kind of a skill shortage, lack of representation of women and uh, diverse ethnicities in the field, but then they aren't sticky. I know we've had a couple of, of shout outs for the event that's coming up in April, uh, the Women in Tech Regatta. I wanted to bring it up as well these are the groups that participated in, in the WIT regatta last year. And uh, we had 46 organizations, 175, I think, speakers. Uh, again, this event has five technology tracks, educational tracks. And uh, this is normally where I would do a plug for an AWC event that's coming up, and we were actually in the process of planning our 2019 program. But this gives you, um, uh, will be an opportunity to meet other organizations, other professional networking organizations, connect with other women in technology, women in the industry. I still firmly believe that that is the best way to find a job. I have, I've been in IT for over 20 years and I've never found a job by simply responding to an ad. It's always been through professional networking. Manage your professional network, your LinkedIn contacts, just like you would take care of a plant. You know, feed them, water them, care for them all the time. That is really where you'll, you'll make your connections. <laughs> Some of the things that we can also do, um, if you're a hiring manager, 
try very, very hard to take the gender bias out of your job postings and uh, really think about how what your job postings say and be careful with that languaging. And then um, continue to uh, make yourself available as a mentor, make yourself available for uh, letting a young person in tech shadow you, learn what uh, working in IT is really, really like, and then also don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to apply for a job even if you don't have every single skill in the job posting. You know, I think that's a, another sort of a, a gender disparity. It's a broad stereotype. Men may apply for a job that they have, you know, most of the skills for or some of the skills for, and a woman will freak out if she doesn't have every single thing on the, on the job posting. Be fearless. Don't be afraid to show how you can learn, how you, you come up to speed on the skills that you don't have. And then again, continue to professionally network and, uh, and just pick an organization, you know, that, um, that aligns with your skill set and, and your skill set and, and uh, the people that you want to meet and the way you want to connect and uh, use that. All right, thank you, Lynn. Does anybody have any questions for Lynn? Anyone in the audience, any questions? Okay, great. Well, there's the contact information where you can get a hold of her. Thank you, Lynn.